The first thing about how to write a thriller is probably to tell you that most people who've written thrillers, I suspect, spent a lot of time writing stuff that ended up in the bin. It's a very, I mean, I hesitate to say it's really difficult because people will find that pretentious, but I think it is quite a demanding and difficult mechanism. And I've read so many thrillers in my life that basically don't work that well. And you think, the, often you think, ah, I know what happened here. The authors had a great idea and they've started with huge enthusiasm and then realised they can't quite wrap everything up. And the only reason I know that is because I've done it and so is every other thriller writer. So the first thing I'd say is that structure is incredibly important. So think about your engine. I always tend to think of about it in terms of an engine. What is tightening the noose around this person? What is pushing them into greater and greater jeopardy? If you can answer that, then you've definitely got a, a good start. Point two, as a personal thing, I would go and find, this is what I always advise people, go and find an author you really like. Look at one or two or three of their books you think are pre brilliant. Read them several times and try to break them down. Structure, characters, how does the jeopardy deepen? How does the clock tick? How, does, how do we create a, a sense of excitement? And then put your own idea down and literally compare it. Now, a lot of people don't want to do that because now it'll end up being derivative. You won't. By the time you've finished your novel, it'll be totally different. But it's just a question, or you waste a lot less time if you think, does what I'm planning really measure up? I guess the third point would be, on how that engine works. To give you a specific example, when I wrote my uh, first novel, Shadow Dance, I came up with what I thought was a really good idea. MI5 agent recruits a, w a w woman um, IRA member as a spy, traps her really into working room. She goes back, all her family are in the IRA. She became an informant to protect her young children, but she's betraying her family and they're beginning to suspect that they've got an informant. Well, maybe you can see already that already is a, is, a, is, a, is a feels quite tense potentially. But the trouble is I wrote it partly from her perspective and partly from the MI5 officer's perspective. And as I wrote, once she went back to Belfast, the MI5 officer didn't really have much to do. And the more I, I, my agent was getting more and more annoyed and I kept on trying to, I came up with love interests, broken heart, you know, you name it. But it just wasn't working. And eventually my agent wrote in the, in the paragraph um, side, yes, but the trouble is, he's a wanker and this is going nowhere. And finally I clicked and I thought, okay. And that's when I came up with the idea, which is key to the novel, which is that as the book goes on, he realises that his bosses have another agent in the IRA who's more important than his. And the only reason he was asked to recruit his woman was so she could be chucked overboard when the hunt for the tout got too close. Now you can, you can see there that you've got two potential mechanisms tightening and that was absolutely critical. And last of all, I would just go back to the greats, the presumed innocence, the silence of the lambs and just look at how they work and are structured and the beauty of the way the central drama of the story is meshed into the broader, essentially political backdrop. And also the way the crime stories are so brilliantly constructed. Just to give you one example to finish with, my agent kept on, when I was writing my first novel, getting me to go back and reread and reread Silence of the Lambs just to look at some of the brilliant way things were. And if you remember in that, Clarice Starling, the FBI agent, is told by Hannibal Lecter, what do we covet, Clarice? We covet what we see every day. And she gets that what he means is, okay, I've got to go back and find someone close to the first victim because that's where the perpetrator I'm looking for, the serial killer is. And then she tries and she tries and she just can't get a break into it. And then finally she realizes that she's been looking at it the wrong way and that the first body that was found was not the first victim. And the moment she goes like that, it suddenly all makes sense. That's the kind of genius moment that I guess every thriller writer is aiming for. The sort of totally surprised, didn't see it coming. Oh, wow, that's clever. If you can come up with that, get writing.